What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today, I'll be taking a look at the interest for the 2024 Coca-Cola 600. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start starting to talk about the one car for track house racing. This of course will be driven by Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain's had a very solid season so far in 2024 and it does look like that the track house cars are showing a little bit more speed recently. He's still looking for his first win of 2024 but very came very close to winning this race in 2022. He'll be looking to get his first win of 2024 this weekend at Charlotte. Up next, how about the two car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Austin Cinder. Austin Cinder has had a very up and down start to 2024. He's had some good runs, but some bad runs as well. Luckily, we're going to a track where Team Penske's won before. In fact, they won last year with Ryan Blaney in the Coke 600. And Austin Cinder, once again, will be looking to get another victory and looks to win his first victory since the 2022 Daytona 500. Up next, how about the three car for Richard Childress Racing? This will once again be driven by Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon is a former Cold Coast 600 winner as he won it back in 2017, which was his first career cup series win. He's looking to turn the momentum around and get the momentum back on his way considering I think he's only got one top 10 so far this season. It's been a struggle for him. He looks to bounce back and have a very strong and good run this weekend in this year's Coca Cola 600 in the three car. Up next, how about the four car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Josh Berry. Josh Berry has been improving so far throughout the 2024 season as he currently sits, I believe, 21st in the points and almost inside the top 20 and is currently the leader of the Rookie of the Year honors. He's looking to win his first career Cup Series race this weekend. SHRs has some decent pace on the mile and a half. I think that Josh Berry could have a solid top 10 or top 15 run. He's also won a Charlotte before back, I believe, in 2021 or 2022 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Up next, how about the five car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson is a former Coco 600 winner back in 2021, but he's going to have a very busy day on Sunday, as not only is he going to be competing in the Coke 600, but he's also going to be racing in the Indy 500 for Aaron McLaren, and will start fifth in the Indy 500. He has the opportunity to become the first driver to win the Indy 500 and the Cold Coast 600 on the same day in the double. I think Kyle Larson has a really great chance and a very strong opportunity to get it done in this year's Coca-Cola 600. Up next, how about the sixth car for RFK Racing? This will once again be driven by Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski is coming off of winning the last points paying race at Darlington Raceway, and RFK Racing is showing a lot of momentum. And last year, Brad Keselowski had some great pace and speed. He also won the Cold Coast 600 back in 2020. He's looking to win a second straight points paying race and get, I believe, his 37th Career Cup Series win. Brad Keselowski looks to get it done this week with RFK as Charlotte in the Coke 600. Up next, how about the seven car for Spire Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy started the year off very, very strong, but quickly has been falling off over the course of the last few weeks. He's looking to have a good run this weekend, though, and turn around. We know things can get crazy, and Corey LaJoy is known for not wrecking out his cars. So we'll see what Corey LaJoy can do and see if he can have a good run this weekend at Charlotte. Up next, how about the A car for Richard Childress Racing? This one wants to be driven by Kyle Busch. He's also going to be competing in the Xfinity Series race earlier in the weekend as well. And Kyle Busch is a former Coke Cold 600 winner back in 2018. He got in a fight with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. last week in North Wilkesboro in the All Star race and looks to have a really good turnaround in Bats Pack. He's been good a mile and a half in the past. His A car shown some pace and speed. We'll see what Kyle Busch can do this weekend in the Coke Cold 600. Up next, how about the nine car for Hendrick Motorsports? This will once again be driven by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has come very close to winning the Cold Coast 600 in the past and is looking for a second win of 2024. Luckily, Chase Elliott has shown some great pace and speed as he finished in third at Kansas, or fourth at Kansas, excuse me, and did win at Texas not too long ago. He's looking to get another victory this year, what I believe be his 20th or 21st career cup series win. He looks to get it done. We'll see what Chase Elliott can do this week at Hendrick Motorsports in the Coke 600. Up next, how about the 10 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson has been very underrated so far throughout 2024. Currently sits 18th in the standings and is looking for his first career cup series win this weekend. We've seen SHR show some pace to this track in the past. They've come close to winning Cold Cold 600 in the past as well. We'll see what Noah Gregson can do and we'll see if Noah Gregson can get that first victory of 2024 this weekend at Charlotte. 
Up next, some of the 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. This will once again be driven by Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin is a winner of the Co 600 back in 2022 and has been very fast as so far in 2024 as he's looked to be one of the championship favorites throughout the season so far. He's looking to get his fourth victory of 2024 this weekend. We'll see if Denny Hamlin can get it done this weekend in the Co Cole 600. Up next, how about the 12th car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney won last year's Coca Cola 600 in 2023 and is looking to go back to back this year. It seems like the Penske cars are showing a little bit more speed after what happened in North Wilkesboro, and like I said, he is the defending winner. He's been one of the strongest fourths so far throughout the 2024 season. We'll see what Ryan Blaney can do this weekend in the Coca Cola 600. Up next, how about the 14 car for Stuart Haas Racing? This will once again be driven by Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe's had an up and down year so far in 2024, but currently is in the playoffs, sitting 11th or 12th in the standings. He's still kind of on that borderline of the playoffs, but one thing for Chase Briscoe is he did come close to winning this race back in 2022, but unfortunately before wrecking. He's looking to get his first win in nearly two years back at Phoenix. We'll see what he ends up doing, and we'll see if Chase Briscoe can win with SHR this weekend, as there's a very uncertain future with this team. Up next, how about the 15 car for Rick Ware Racing? This one once again be driven by Kaz Grala. This car has been driven by drivers like Riley Herbst and Cody Ware as well. And we could see drivers like Haley Deegan in the future if funny comes into play. But Kaz Grawl has looked very solid with this team. The last points main race you saw him race, he finished in the top 20 at Darlington. We'll see what he ends up doing this weekend. And we'll see if Kaz Grawl can have a very solid and good performance with Rick Ware this weekend. Up next, how about the 16 car for Colleague Racing? This will once again be driven by Shane Van Gisbergen, who will make his third points paying start of 2024. And this will also be Shane Van Gisbergen's first cup start on a mile and a half. Colleague has been struggling on these types of tracks, but Trackhouse, to my understanding, is going to be doing a lot of the work on this car. And we've seen Trackhouse be good here at Charlotte in the past. So we'll see how he ends up doing, but it's a big accomplishment for him. We'll see what Shane Van Gisbergen can do this weekend with Colleague Racing. Up next, top of the 17 car for RFK Racing. This is once again be driven by Chris Busher. Chris Busher has had a very solid year so far in 2024 and has come very close to winning the last couple of races. Finishing third at North Wilkesboro, had a chance to win at Darlington, and came very close to winning at Kansas earlier this year. He's still looking for that first victory of 2024, but the Fords have shown a lot more pace and speed. I could see Chris Busher have a chance and opportunity of getting his first win in the Coca-Cola 600 this season. Up next, how about the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. has been very consistent throughout the 2024 season with only one finish outside the top 20 this year. He's looking to get his first win in 2024, but he has won the Coke 600 twice in the past, back in 2019 and 2016. He's still looking for his first win of the season, and I think he's got a great chance and opportunity to win the Coke 600 this season with the speed of the Toyotas. Up next, how about the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell has been having some really good speed throughout the 2024 season, but also has made a ton of mistakes out on the racetrack as well. He's still looking for that second win of the season. He's come close to winning the Coke Cola 600 in the past. He was very fast last year in the Coke 600. I think he's got a really solid chance and a strong opportunity to win the Coke Cola 600 with Joe Gibbs Racing. Up next, top of the 21 car for the Wood Brothers. This will once again be driven by Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton has not had a good year so far in 2024, and while Rummel's rumors speculate, they'll likely be out of the Wood Brothers at the end of the season. It's been a big struggle for him. He's looking to turn it around. He's had oh, some like good runs at points, but really has struggled at the team and likely will not be back with the team in 2025. Up next, how about the 22 car for Team Penske? This will once again be driven by Joey Logano. Joey Logano, of course, is coming off of winning the All-Star Race this past week and is looking to build that momentum by trying to get, I believe, what would be his first ever Coca-Cola 600 win. Joey Logano has been very fast at times this year, but has also struggled for the most part as he looks to pick up a lot of points this weekend and get back into playoff contention. Luckily, Joey Logano is someone that can really turn a corner, and he's still looking for another championship as he looks to become the first driver, at least in the field right now, with three championships. Up next, top of the 23 car for 2311 Racing. This will once again be driven by Bubba Walls. 
Bubba Wallace has had an up and down year so far in 2024. While I believe he's got five or six top tens so far this year, he is still sitting outside of class by about four or five points. But we're going to type of track where he's been good at, and that is mile and a half. And I think that Bubba Wallace is going to be a very solid threat and contender to potentially get that first win of 2024. He's been great at these types of tracks. I think we'll have a great chance and opportunity to win the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, top of the 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports. This one once again be driven by William Byron. William Byron has had an up and down year also in 2024. While he has had three wins, which is tied for the most this season, he's also had a lot of very big inconsistencies and hasn't led as much, many laps as he did last season. He's looking to pick up his first ever Coke Cola 600 win, was fast in last year's Coke 600. I think he's got a really solid chance and a good opportunity to win his first ever Coke Cola 600 and looks to get another victory as well. Up next, how about the 31 car for Colleague Racing? This will once again be driven by Daniel Hemmerich. After two straight top 10 finishes, he had a bad run at Darlington. And he didn't run that good at the All-Star Race as well. A lot of Romans rumors circulating around Colleague Racing currently at the moment, whether this team's even going to be around in the Cup Series full-time next year. He's looking to have a good run and try to squall those rumors as he looks to get his first career Cup win this weekend at Charlotte. Up next, out of the 34 car for Front Row Motorsports. This will once again be driven by Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell's had a lot of speed this year, but hasn't always had the finishes. But to be fair, the last two races, Michael McDowell has finished inside the top 10. I feel like Front Row Motorsports is starting to show a lot more pace and a lot more speed. And the consistency is coming back for Michael McDowell once again of being up front. He's looking to get his first win in 2024. And also, his second, what would be his second really big win. He'll look to get a victory this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, up at the 38 car for Front Row Motorsports. This one once again be driven by Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen has had a very solid third year with Front Row. I know he's only got, like, I think, one top 10 so far this season, but he's been way more consistently in the top 15 and top 20. He's looking to continue that momentum and the pace as a tier one stuff really starts coming in. We'll see if Todd Gillen can have a good run because I think Gillen could have some good pace and speed this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, up with the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing. This will once again be driven by Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest has no doubt been the weak link at Stuart Haas Racing this season. But Ryan Priest, in my opinion, is a very talented driver and has had some good runs at mile and a half in the past. He's looking for his first win of the season and first win of his career. We'll see if Ryan Priest can get the victory, which could help his future going forward in an NASCAR Cup Series if he can get it done. Up next, top of the 42 car for Legacy Motor Club. This will once again be driven by John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter Nemechek has had a very solid year at times, but also struggled at points this year. For the first seven or eight races, he was in the playoffs, but has been fading as the year has gone on. He's looking to turn it around. We've seen the Legacy cars have decent pace at points this year, but there has been struggles in the past. We'll see if John Hunter Nemechek can, can have a good run with Legacy Motor Club this weekend. Up next, how about the 43 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by Eric Jones. Eric Jones came back at Darlington and finished in 19th. And then I believe Denver Forci did not make the all-star race. He is looking to have a good run this weekend in the Coke Cola 600 and looks to get a victory this weekend. We've seen his speed from the Toyotas, especially on the mile and a half. And we'll see if Eric Jones can have a very solid and good run with Legacy Motor Club this weekend in the Coke Cola 600. Up next, how about the 44 car for NY Racing? They'll make, I believe, their second or third attempt of 2024. And once again, J.J. Lee will be behind the wheel of the 44 car this weekend. J.J. has ran for the team in the past, ran a course, and had a chance to make the Daytona 500, and then ran at Las Vegas. We'll see what he can do this weekend. We don't know who else will be behind the wheel of that team the rest of the year, what other races are going to show up. But NY Racing, once again, is back this weekend at the Coke 600. Up next, up with the 45 car for 2311 Racing. This will once again be driven by Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick has had a pretty solid year so far in 2024. I believe he is tied for the most top 10s with Alex Bowman, and I also believe William Byron or Chase Elliott. Tyler Reddick also has been very fast a mile and a half, and we expect him to be a major threat and major contender to go to victory lane this weekend. He's going to have a good chance and opportunity to get it done as he looks to get another victory this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, how about the 47 car for JTG Doherty Racing? This will once again be driven by Ricky Senhouse Jr. 
The big thing with Senhouse is he got in the fight with Kyle Busch at North Folksboro, and that bad blood can carry into this weekend for him. He's actually been really solid over the last couple years in the Coke 600. He's had some top 10 and top 15 performances. He's looking for a very solid and good run this weekend. We'll see what Ricky Senhouse Jr. can do with JTG Doherty as it looks to have a good run with the team this weekend. Up next, top of the 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports. This one once again be driven by Alex Bowman. Despite the fact that Alex Bowman has not won races or led a lot of laps, he's been one of the more consistent drivers throughout the 2024 season as he has nearly 10 top 10s so far this year. He's looking for a victory this week in his first win of the year. He's definitely been the weak link in Hendrick so far this year, but has still had a very solid year. And if you're the weak link and you're running as good as Bowman has been, you're still having a very solid season. Up next, how about the 50 car for Team Amravet Racing? This is technically a new organization that is going to be showing up, but this is basically what the team, money team is being rebranded to. They will make their first start of the 2024 season. It's unknown who will be behind the wheel. It's more than likely going to be Ty Dillon, but it also could be someone out of nowhere like a Jeffrey Earnhardt or Matt Benedetto, despite the ties with Ford. We'll see whoever they end up driving, but I believe Ty Dillon is going to be driving for this team at Charlotte this weekend in the Colt Close 600. Glad to see technically a new team showing up to the track. Up next, up at the 51 car for Rick Ware Racing. This one once again be driven by Justin Haley. Justin Haley has been carrying that equipment throughout the 2024 season. has been showing some really great pace. He just got his first points paying top 10 in a Rick Ware Racing car, and he's looking to continue that momentum as he had a lot of speed at the All-Star Open. He's looking for a great run this weekend, and will be looking to get his first victory, even though I think it's going to be really easy to do. He's looking to get another great run this weekend in the Coke 600. Up next, how about the 54 car for Joe Gibbs Racing? This will once again be driven by Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs has had a lot of great runs so far this year, but also has had struggles throughout the 2024 season, especially as a late. Luckily, he's had some good performances, and he's looking to pick up his first career victory in the biggest and longest race of the year. He's looking to get it done. We'll see if Ty Gibbs can finally get that first career win this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, top of the 71 car for Spire slash Trackhouse. This one once again be driven by Zane Smith. This has been a disaster season for Zane Smith, but we're going to track where Zane's been good at. Remember, last year, he finished in the top 10. He is looking for a great run with Spire as it's been a little bit of struggle this season with the team. We'll see what Zane Smith can do and see if he can turn the corner this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. Up next, top of the 77 car for Spire Motorsports. This will once again be driven by Carson Hosebar. Carson Hosebar has continued to be really impressive as a rookie as he has a great chance and opportunity to win the Rookie of the Year honors in 2024. He's had the pace and speed to do it. There's some teams looking at him for next year, but likely back with Spire. He's looking for a very solid run. We'll see if Carson Ospar can get his second top, second top 10 finish of the 2024 season in the Coke 600. Up next, how about the 84 car for Legacy Motor Club? This will once again be driven by Jimmy Johnson, who will make, I think, his third or fourth schedule start of the season. Jimmy's been struggling for sure since getting into the next-gen car, but the more reps that Jimmy has, the better he's going to get. And I feel like Jimmy Johnson will have an outside chance and opportunity to at least get a top 20. We'll see what Jimmy Johnson ends up doing, and we'll see if he can have a good run this weekend in the Coca-Cola 600. And finally, the last job we're going to talk about is the Driver 99 car for Trackhouse Racing, and that, of course, is Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez dominated the 2022 edition of this race, but in 2023, he struggled. And I feel like that he's been struggling a bit the last couple of months. He is looking for a bounce back and great run this weekend. In this year's Coca-Cola 600, we'll see if Daniel Suarez can have a very good and strong run in the 2024 Coca-Cola 600 as he's looking to get his second win of 2024. So, that is the official entry list for the 2024 Coca-Cola 600. I want to thank guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're on us to invite when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Let's go to more of that and comment your thoughts below on today's video. What are thoughts about today's entry list? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Later today on the channel, you're going to see the Truck Series race picks for the race at Charlotte. Then tomorrow on the channel, you're going to see an Ask for News video, any 500 race picks as well. And you're also going to see the Xfinity Series race picks if any major news breaks throughout the week. We'll discuss it here on the channel. We've got a lot of content dropping this week that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.